you know how you recognize a good cook? Is when he whisk, but is not, you know? <laughs> Dancing because with... <laughs> Restaurant Danielle. Super excited to cook with Chef Danielle. A little bit nervous, to be honest. This restaurant has been at the forefront of French fine dining in New York City. And today, we're going to step into the brains of the operation to see how Chef Danielle and Chef Eddie LaRue have developed and created their version of Ormo, which is abalone to you and me. I'm so excited, let's go. Salut, Chef. Welcome. Thank you. What type of abalone is this? So these are the uh, source from uh, northern Japan, Ezo. Ezo. And they farm raised from Kona, Hawaii. Okay. Would you consider this the sort of best abalone, you'd say? Well, the best farm raised. Best we have farm found. raised. Is it its own unique flavor profile yeah, or it's, similar it's, to it's, it's, it's a clam? Briny, briny. But as it's cooked, it's sweet, so it's more briny when it's raw. We came up with a very good compromise of, uh, you know, French technique yes. and sort of Japanese influence. So it's really a, a combination of, um, you know, the brininess of the sea and the earthiness of the land. Excellent. It is yeah. going to show you, it's got a big iPad Pro where every dish is broken down. Looks oh. just like a Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> this is my notebook. I like to fill the books and then I just keep them. Um, so, so the dish we're going to do today, these lines here, is this something you do it's with the... It's the puff pastry. Okay. Which is cut actually with a scalpel. Exactly. With a and, scalpel? And Scapel, yes. Wow. So if anybody top. needs surgery, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, we're ready. <laughs> so you use the scalpel and sort of make these incisions over the top. Absolutely. So it's very clean, awesome. And we have the rocks around the outside. What's we interesting is that the puff pastry carry a little bit like that. Okay, also. over the top. And then in the middle, like under the puff pastry is so we'll have sliced a, abalone correct, yeah. um, under here. Yeah. And then the, um, the fresh potato. Crushed potato with on, uh, on top? On the bottom. On the bottom of, okay. On yeah. the bottom like of inside the, here. Inside. Crushed potato with uh, the seaweed. With seaweed. Uh, okay. Yeah. They cut just along to remove the puff pastry and put the sauce over. Yeah, it, it looks very much like you. Yes. It works. Excellent. It's getting there. So we get to bring this dish to life now, right? Indeed, yes. Awesome. Look at this abalone, A little baby. Sun. Okay, so what is the best way to... With a clean? spoon, it's very easy to scoop them out. Okay. So you slide it under the muscle, remove the, the guts and everything from okay. here. And then with the gilt, so you go all around. So what are you scrubbing off? You know, the, it's like a like kind of an ink, like you can find with a squid. Okay, okay. This is the part you cut. Exactly. Yeah. All the way around. All the way. All the way. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Very good. Put me to work. <laughs> are you doing good? I'm okay, Sean. Yeah. Watch out that stomach because sometimes <laughs> they burst. Explode, huh? They burst and they make you smell. Yeah, a little but juice. But no Chanel. Uh. <laughs> For sure. So we wash these and save them. So yeah, plate. so we're going to blanch in salty water to use them as presentation. Okay, amazing. Chef, so do people in France eat a lot of abalone? Yes, but not so much all over France. I think in Brittany more, Paris, but it has never been uh, such a wildly popular item. It's an acquired test. I think here, the way we prepare it, if you never had abalone, you understand it and you feel then it's delicate and it has a great texture. You want to taste the piece roll? Yes, I would love to. It's almost like texture of a gui duck yeah. sashimi uh, style. It's, uh, yeah. it's so it's tender. Sweet, huh? It's it sweet, it's very tender. That's not what I was expecting. I was mm -hmm. expecting it to be extremely tough. The texture of the abalone raw is impeccable. It's almost like eating um, like gui duck or exactly or, or, or conch or exactly like, like super soft, tender, delicious. Almost like a light liver flavor, like on the back end, mm -hmm. very light mm -hmm. in a beautiful way. Then <laughs> okay. we're going to braise them. So marinier is a um, classic uh, cooking with, with shallots, shallot. onion. You put your shelf dry, then we, you deglaze with white wine. Make a steam covered, and you cook usually very, very fast. Okay. Oh. And then we'll add some uh, like a light chicken broth or parsley, but we'll be cooking for two to three hours, depending the size of your abalone. Beautiful. You really have the flavors of this dish carry throughout 
the experience, right? You use this, this as a sauce. Exactly, and that's why we kind of compounds the flavor, right? Mm -hmm. Concentrate, yeah, exactly. Uh, we're going to blanch the seaweed, correct? Yes. Uh, about how long? Two to three minutes in salty. Two to three uh, minutes. We have three different kinds of uh, seaweed: Mastocarpus, rock dwarf weed, and cat's tongue. <laughs> I love this. Oh my gosh! Look at the color, how it changes. Yeah, it changed a lot. Then. So cool. What is the purpose of blanching it's, the seaweed? It standardizes a little bit the seaweed, like something gelatinous but still too soft. Yes. Too soft. Yes. And then we uh, shock in ice water to preserve the color. Shock in ice water to preserve the color. You have no idea, I'm really actually super passionate about seaweed, so like, this is really exciting to me. And you know what I do is I soak the seaweed, and then you use the seaweed water as a facial toner. No, <laughs> really? Yeah, it's really good. Here I had the potatoes we cooked also. Potatoes. So we cooked them also with seaweed inside. Oh, nice. I'm gonna put you on the potato. Okay. You know, that'll bring you back to your uh, youth <laughs> as a young chef. So how French are you when you're cooking? How French? Oui. Chef. Oui. Oui. Allez. Voila. The most, chef. I'm like so oh, really, huh? extra. Okay, we have enough potatoes. Excellent. We have the parsley. We have the broth. The abalones are cooked. Yep. Dish is coming together. Yeah. This is so amazing. I have to say. I'm going to melt some seaweed butter to melt it down to put with your potatoes. Okay, chef. And uh, AD, put I also the, the seaweed. The seaweed yeah. You want to taste my seaweed butter? Oh, it's so good. Where are you sourcing the butter from, Chef? Uh, this is from Bordier, and the seaweed butter to me is a gem. It's ah. delicious. It's just so gourmand and oui, chef. so unique. So belly melted, and you can see in the butter there is all the seaweed as well, which has nourished the, that butter. Yes. Yeah, we're going to zest some lemon with it. So you see our abalone are cooked, and they, they, they shrunk a little bit. Wow. You really smell all of those yeah. amazing mm -hmm. flavors, mm -hmm. the celery, the leeks. Shallots. Yeah, exactly. Time. It's very gourmand. Oh, it's so beautiful. We're going to pre-slice yeah. them. I want you to taste the potato. The combination of the black pepper, the, the, the seaweed, the, uh, the lemon. I had a golden spoon for you. My favorite. It's good, huh? Chef, it's so beautiful. It's peppery. And it's, it's the way the black pepper comes in and sort mm -hmm. of intermingles with the potato, the creaminess. Absolutely not. And then a beautiful touch of lemon zest. It brightens everything up. So, Naisha, if you want to slice the abalone? Yeah. Fill the shell with some, um, some potato generously. We're going to compress. Okay, potato in. This is going to be so delicious. And then we compress. Okay, chef. You're doing a beautiful yes. job. Uh, the, the top muscle okay, goes yes, below, we. so the more bold uh, side goes on top. Okay. It's a wonderful dish because then for every slice of abalone, there is a spoon of potatoes and seaweeds. And, and I think it's the quintessential sort of land and sea preparation. It's our surf and turf. Yes. <laughs> Looking good. I think we can... Uh, we can charge uh, <laughs> 25 bucks for it, nice. or 30. No, <laughs> it's part of your prefix. Puff pastry, of course, we all know what it is. And Eddie made some small disc of puff pastry. The, the stuff abalone now, the puff pastry, and you place it right in the center nicely, and you start to really fold just the edge of it underneath. So you can crush it underneath, but you don't want to touch it on the bottom. So I think what we like with puff pastry is first and we are using only the top after because we're gonna cut through the shell around. It's just the delicateness because there is butter also with the potatoes inside. I think it really worked well. So now we're going to put the egg yolk. We're going to flash freeze for five minutes for the dough to be firm. And then we're going to do the incision. With the scalpel. With the scalpel. Let's taste the broth, you know, that, that, that broth where the abalone cooked off three and a half hour almost. I could drink that as a broth. <laughs> this is it's uh, the finest uh, soup. Yes, you can make. exactly. <laughs> so we swing this over. So yeah, the stock, the parsley, the lemon juice, the uh, heavy cream. And then we're going to put back in the pan to make the roux. You have it here. So we have the roux. Okay. I'm going to put uh, a good tablespoon of uh, roux like that. May I? Oh, oui. 
As you see, the sauce has a little bit of thickness. Okay. Not much, but enough to do a little bit of a coating. And it's green, but because of the lemon juice, it will be difficult to keep it like fresh green. Yes. It's more like uh, dark, pistachio. Uh, yeah, pistachio <laughs> green. Voilà. Build that up. Yum. And now we add the egg yolk. So from there? So after we add the uh, cartridge, what does that do to the sauce? Uh, right now the sauce has uh, sort of a certain thickness, but it's still liquid like this. Right. And of course with the canister, it's gonna make it a little more foamy, delicate yes. in a way. Oh my gosh, everything in the kitchen is so important. It's like to the minute, to the second. It's a big production. So now it is gonna do surgery. Okay. So that's the... So the abalone is out of the freezer. Yeah. yeah They're cold. Just, uh, so you hold it like this, and then we going to make stripes. So every two millimeter, you go almost all the way through. And what's the purpose of this? Well, f just for decoration. Okay. It's your scalpel. This is literally the first time I've used a scalpel in the kitchen. I'm, right. I'm such a doctor now. So we are putting like a little uh, footing. A little oh, beautiful. razor footing, so this way uh, they can bake underneath nicely as well. Okay. Now, uh, 427. Okay. Voila. Okay. Bye, abalones. See you. <laughs> okay, the abalone is almost cooked. I'm pouring a little bit of Chablis. Oh my goodness. That'll be the what perfect match. <laughs> Time to celebrate. Naisha at Danielle for the first time. Ah, uh, somebody's calling you. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, attention. Oui, chef. A ballon en croûte. En croûte. This is just water and flour. It's a sticker. So it doesn't slide around. Exactly. Okay, you put your stone around. The beautiful black plate, the lava rock, Absolutely. the abalone, there is such a, a sense of place. And then you put your cap back. Okay. Superb. Voila. Here we go. A little bit of potato, a little bit of sauce. I think this is the best thing I ever tasted in my life. This is impeccable. It's amazing how much the abalone transforms from the sweet nuttiness when it's in its raw form and then very elegant and soft on the palate with the potato. Happy. My soul is so happy right now. Merci. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Hope to see you soon. Yes.